Hi, I'm Rob, N1NUG. As you can probably see and maybe hear in the microphone, it's a rainy, windy day. Now today is actually Support Your Parks Weekend for Parks on the Air. It's something that they do once a quarter to bring awareness to the state parks that we all love to frequent. The Meriden Amateur Radio Club here in Connecticut decided that they also wanted to kind of extend that a little bit and make it sort of activate Connecticut Day or maybe activate Connecticut Weekend. And they were encouraging all of us Connecticut hams to get out into various parks and put them on the air this morning. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I've decided that I'm gonna activate Schnipsit State Forest, Kilo 4369. In particular, I'm activating from the summit of Soapstone Mountain. This is really just a hill that's about a thousand feet in elevation but on the west side behind the camera it overlooks the Connecticut River Valley. And behind me here we have a little bit of a nice view off to the east. Well we would if it wasn't foggy and cloudy. Hopefully you can see a little bit of the fall colors today. We are pretty much at peak leaf season as well. Now normally when I come up here to activate I like to activate from one of these picnic tables that you see behind me. But they're soaking wet and I think there's more rain on the way. So what I think I'm going to do is activate from my car, which is parked over here in the parking area. Now, I've also mentioned to some of my local ham friends that I talked to on the local repeater that I was going to be up here today. Some of them are aware of POTA and some of them are not. So I thought it might be a good exposure for the ones that aren't and maybe the ones that are active in POTA would want to kind of activate with me. Either way, I'm not sure if anybody's going to stop up here because we sort of have a lousy forecast today. But if they do and they're willing to be on the video, well, you might meet a few of my local Connecticut ham buddies. Now in typical 741 fashion, I'm gonna be in sort of F around and find out mode today <laughs> to some degree. I'm gonna try a couple of new things. Usually when I come up here, I throw my N-fed half wave kind of up in the branch of a tree and it works just fine. But actually at the last ham fest I was at, I picked up a jack light pole. So I'm gonna try and hook it up to that, even though I haven't even taken the thing out of the container yet to make sure it's okay. The other thing that I'm gonna try uh, is some computer logging today. Normally I log on paper, but I brought my uh, old Linux laptop with hammers loaded on it and sort of a battery backup power supply so I can run the thing. And we'll see if that works. Um, maybe it will, maybe it won't. I've got paper as a backup just in case. All right, so here's the pole. I'm gonna set this up first. I've attempted to tie a piece of fishing line off to it but I guess I didn't do that very well. This jack light pole is brand new and I didn't have a chance to put anything on the end of here more substantial than a bit of fishing line but this should hold for the day. So, so I'm gonna walk this antenna out somewhere over in that direction and what that'll do is give us a nice broadside pattern sort of to the southwest so hopefully we'll make some good contacts throughout the country and some of the other parks in the southwestern part of the state. So I think I found a spot over here in the trees that should work. The car is kind of over there behind me. There's sort of a path right here, and I'm gonna kind of run the antenna along the side of the path. I don't think anybody's gonna come up here today, but uh, you know, if there's an antenna in the way, I think somebody will probably end up finding it no matter where I put it. <laughs> so I'm just gonna take my chances here. Now I'll finish extending the pole, and I'm gonna lean it up against this tree here and then I'll probably tie the base off to the tree so it doesn't fly away in this little bit of wind that we're starting to get. I think I've got this antenna up well enough to where it's going to work, but it's not exactly the way I had it pictured it in my mind. But I always forget that there's more trees here than uh, I always remember, and the trees are just kind of getting in the way of doing what I want to do. Also the mud pit <laughs> over there of where I parked, and I'll show you that in a minute. That's part of the problem. But you can see I've got this poorly tied off to the tree uh, don't even just pretend you didn't see any of that but anyway <laughs> the pole is up here you can see it's bent over quite a bit at the top as you might expect and then the wire extends over here it's caught in some branches but it should be okay and then extends down over to here where I've got the feed point so I've got the feed point tied off in this little tree that's maybe I don't know five feet off the ground or so and I've got my coax attached at the bottom going over to the car there. I've got enough coax here to get in the car and to the back seat where I plan to sit and operate from. Now I thought maybe I'd be able to set up my easy up tent over the back of the car here, but the ground is all uneven. It, whoa, Jesus, and it's slippery. I don't know if you can tell in the camera, but the car is sort of at an angle 
the ground is not even here and that's because the rest of this parking area over here is a mud hole so i obviously couldn't set up over here where it was flat i also thought about you know being able to back up to that picnic table or something but uh, it's just not going to work with this here okay so here's the setup i'm sitting in the way back seat of my suburban and i've got my tripod over here i'm going to dock this camera on that when i'm done shooting this clip I've got my work surface here, which is the second row folded over, of course. Uh, I've got my phone, of course. Here's the GoPro, although this isn't working too well in here because it's kind of dark. The Yezu FT891 is on 40 meters, as you can see. And I've got my computer set up and running ha Andy's Ham Radio Linux, although I've got a bit of a problem with it. I don't know if you guys can see the screen. It's kind of washed out. Whenever I type letter keys that have sort of numbers corresponding to them, I'm getting those numbers. And I don't know how to turn that off. I'm hitting the numlock key, it's not doing anything. So I don't know what the hell mode this thing is in, but it wasn't doing this last night, and of course it is now. I'm happy to report that I was able to figure out my numlock problem. I just had to hit the function key with the numlock button and was able to turn that off and log in. So next, here's a few clips of some of the call signs that I worked during the first part of my activation. Most of it was on 40, but I had a few on 15 meters as well. Now, I wasn't able to capture everyone on camera here, so I apologize if you didn't make it in the video, but here's at least a few of you. Go 5-9. Appreciate you being there. KD-4 RU, 7-3. Kilo Delta 2, United with Kickbox. November 3, November India Kilo. November 1, Sierra Whiskey Tango. A Victor Echo 3, Papa, Yankee, Juliet. Kilo Romeo 2 Hotel. November 2, Yankee Quebec Tango. Yeah, Roger. Kilowatt 1, Charlie, Victor Hotel. K-1, Charlie, Victor Hotel. Over. Kilo B, India, Kilo Oscar. Uh, thanks for the contact guys. I gotta take a standby for a minute. Uh, I'll be back in, in a few minutes. N1NUG. I figured out what was wrong with that keystroke and how to unlock it. That was no big deal. Um, but I got the computer set up and running and then I went out to check on the antenna or something. And I had left the side door of the car open and I didn't realize it had started pouring at that moment and a bunch of rainwater got onto the laptop. Now the computer was actually on and working even though it was covered in rainwater. I didn't want to take any chances with it so I shut it down, I took the battery out and just kind of set it aside and logged on paper for this activation. Now before I shut the computer down I was able to check and see if I was getting any RFI from this power station when the computer charger was plugged in and charging the laptop. And I'm happy to report that there wasn't any, no RFI. So that was kind of a good thing that I was able to at least determine. So I should be able to use this setup on future activations as long as I keep everything dry. The Meriden Amateur Radio Club had pre-planned a POTA park to park net at 11 a.m. to be held on 40 meters. So right about at 11, I got a text message from the Meriden group telling me what frequency to meet on and I had previously been sent a list of all the stations that had signed up. So we moved over to 40 meters to start that net. I didn't capture the whole net on camera, and honestly, you guys wouldn't want to sit through the whole thing anyway. But here are a few snippets of what I was able to capture so that you can get an idea of how it went. We have this list of Connecticut activators that are supposed to be online, and right now what he's doing is he's calling all of these guys to see if they're online. And then we're going to work each other. Hi, this is TC1 and QE. Is there any of the Connecticut activators looking to check in? Romeo 1 Bravo from KC1 and QE. I am at 1728. I copy your 1693. I got you like a 5 1 at part K 1693. Uh, November 1, November uniform golf. Uh, do you copy? Uh, QSL, QSL, November 1, November Uniform Golf here. You are 5-7 into Kilo 4369. QSL? QSL, you are 5-9 into Kilo 164. Hey, thanks for the contact. I'll let you go down the list. N1NUG. Uh, November 1, November Uniform Golf, Rob. Uh, let's see, Kilo 1, Papa Charlie, November. 
Uh, you are 59 into Kilo 4369, QSL. Roger, Roger, you are also 59 into Stratford, 73. Okay, let's try it. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Rob, are you there? Uh, November 1, November Uniform Golf, I'm here. Okay, it's your turn. Take over the net. Okay, very good. Let's see what we can do here. Uh, I'm going to call for uh, Whiskey One November Romeo Golf. Okay, QSL, you are 53 into Kilo 4369. QSL? QSL, QSL, thank you. W1FYG, Whiskey One Foxtrot Yankee Golf. Are you there, Don? Okay, nothing heard. Kilo Charlie One, India, Sierra, India. Okay, QSL 1728, you are a 53 into Kilo 4369. QSL? QSL? Nothing heard. Uh, Kilo 8, uh, Lima Sierra Bravo. Kilo 8, Lima Sierra Bravo, you are 5 and 8 into 8665. Okay, QSL, thanks for 6865. You are 53, Kilo 4369. QSL? QSL. Let's see, how about uh, Whiskey One Golf Hotel Delta? Okay, QSL, thanks for 9894. You are 53 into 4369. QSL? Hey, Kilo Bravo 1, Quebec Zulu Hotel. Kilo Bravo 1, Quebec Zulu Hotel, you are 59 into 1696. Okay, QSL, you are 53 into uh, 4369. November 1, Bravo Alpha Mike. Nine, eight, nine, six. QSL 9896, you are 53 into 4369. QSL? Thank you so much. Uh, Kilo Bravo 1, Romeo Sierra. 59, Kilo 7548. Okay, you are 53, Kilo 4369. QSL? QSL. Did I miss anybody? Is there anybody else uh, that I missed? Kilo Charlie 1, India Sierra, India. This is Kilo Charlie 1, India Sierra, India. Okay, very good. The net is yours. Uh, take it away. November 1, November Uniform Golf. Thanks, everyone. All right, this is Kilo Charlie 1, India, Sierra, India. I'm obviously back at home now. Um, I ended up getting a little bit overwhelmed. I'm not a good multitasker, and a lot was going on towards the end. We had the Connecticut POTA sort of net, if you want to call it that, where all the stations were trying to work each other. So I was trying to concentrate on that. I had a couple of people in the car that I was also talking to at the same time, and I just forgot to put the camera on and ask anybody if they wanted to be in the video. Um, and then when we were doing the net, we ended up getting walked on, uh, ironically, by a, a scout station, a, a Jota station, a Jamboree on the air. They fired up uh, 1KC away, and it kind of killed the net, and we just kind of let it go from there. Uh, it was getting kind of late anyway, so I started the wrap up and it was pouring, so I didn't grab the camera to show any of the wrap up. We just got the antenna down as fast as we could. Uh, but all that being said, uh, it was kind of a great activation despite the rain. Um, we had Steve show up. He's not licensed yet, but he's definitely interested in getting licensed. Uh, spent a lot of time talking to him uh, kind of about the hobby and, and some of the aspects of it from POTA to emergency comms to community service, that kind of a thing. And he seemed interested in a lot of it. So that's good. I think we're gonna get another licensee uh, out of it here soon. Feel free to tell me a little bit about yourself and why you stopped by. Uh, hi, I'm Steve. Came here to learn about Parks on the Air uh, in the process of getting my technician's license and uh, just seeing it in person. Okay, well, I appreciate you stopping by and we hope to get you on yeah. the air soon so that you can join us with this great hobby. Yeah, me too. Yeah, thanks for stopping by in the rain. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> All right. Um, I also saw Bill, KC1JTS. He showed up and uh, hung out for a little while, as did Rick, K1RAK, and my sister, KB1WQK, sat in. Uh, none of them operated with me. They were just kind of there to kind of socialize and see what was going on. I think if conditions were better and I was able to put the canopy up, we could have kind of had a table set up and people could have taken turns operating the radio, but the way I had everything set up in the car, it just wasn't kind of conducive for those kind of operations. So we had success, even though it was kind of a washout. <laughs>
Got it? You got it? You ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? Go! <laughs> 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 <laughs>